Welcome to Just Relationships, the show that offers you concrete ways to make your relationships better. Whether it's your boss, your spouse, your children, or your friends, the quality of your relationships in life directly affects how you feel about yourself and the success you achieve. Your host, Dr. Duffy Spencer, a psychotherapist, telecoach, author, and seminar leader, will interview top experts to help you learn to manage this essential part of your life. And now, here's your host, Dr. Duffy Spencer. Greetings to you. Well, unfortunately, uh, bullying is in the news a lot because, obviously, there's a lot of bullying and there's a lot of aggression and even mobbing. Uh, And what is that about? And we're going to look at the difference between mobbing and bullying and many aspects of workplace aggression as well as social aggression and what to do, how to take care of ourselves, how to rebuild social support, how to uh, be aware of uh, not being a victim, how to ally with others for the good, So, I'm very pleased to introduce to you Dr. Maureen Duffy, a Dr. Duffy interviewing a Dr. Duffy, and um, Maureen has been very gracious to to reply to my invitation because first I was attracted to Maureen because of your name, Maureen (laughs) Duffy, and then of course your subject is is right up my alley. Here we are, just relationships, and I have a background in working uh, on workplace violence as well as domestic violence, and so here we are. So how is it that you chose this subject to become an expert in? Well, my, my training is in systemic family therapy, and... To make kind of a long story short about what that means is that systemic practitioners look at not so much the person as just an individual, but as the individual in the context of their whole network of relationships. And that, of course, might include their significant others, their um, intimate relationships, couple marriage relationships, their wider family relationships, and it also includes uh, social relationships, particularly those in the workplace, since we spend, most of us or many of us, so much time in the workplace. So... For someone who is trained in, in that perspective and then witnessing and, and, and seeing uh, in your own practice, as was the case for me, uh, how, how much people were hurting and suffering as a result of being exposed to bullying and mobbing, uh, I developed a particular interest and expertise in that oh, many years ago at this point in time. And um, as you know, Dr. Duffy, I I have uh, written two books with my co-author, Dr. Len Sperry, on mobbing, uh, published by Oxford University Press. The first one is about mobbing that happens both at the school level and at the workplace level. That's mobbing causes consequences and solutions. And we wanted to kind of take that and uh, make the ideas that were incorporated into that book, which was primarily a professional book, and put those into uh, another book for a much broader audience that would include uh, clinicians who work with people who have been exposed to bullying and to mobbing, and also for just the general public. So that second book is Overcoming Mobbing, a Recovery Guide for Workplace Aggression and Bullying. So the focus of the second one was more on uh, what to do about it. Yes. Well, this is what we want. We want to know what we can do uh, about people trying to victimize us and basic cruelty, basic need to scapegoat or or put down others. Um, So let's just start with the difference between bullying and mobbing. Okay, that's a good place to start, I think. Uh, Many more people are familiar with the term bullying than with the term mobbing. Uh, 
uh, mobbing speaks to particular aspects of uh, what happens when bullying kind of uh, starts to escalate. And a common phrase that you can think of and maybe substitute, it's not an exact substitute, but a pretty good one for mobbing, just to get the idea across quickly, is ganging up. Mm. So mobbing, ganging up, I think that gives the flavor mm-hmm. of, of what mobbing is all about. Because what can happen in the workplace and, and also in school uh, situations is that the bullying isn't just always one on one mm-hmm. where there's there's one bully and one target or one victim or even a small group of bullies and one target or victim what can happen in a workplace situation is that once a person for whatever reason and we can talk about how the thing gets started uh in a bit if you like but w- what can happen is that people become kind of recruited into the process of bullying somebody else at work. Now, maybe mm-hmm. they do that because they're afraid if they don't, it's the same thing's going to happen to them, or they get um, seduced by half-truth, gossip, rumor, and then they start to participate in the negative acts that are directed towards the target or, or the victim. So in, in, in a nutshell, workplace mobbing is, is it's a destructive social process in which uh, individuals, then small groups, because of course workplaces are pretty much divided into small groups, and the organization as a whole, as represented by its particular agents or personnel, target someone in the workplace for uh, ridicule, hum- humiliation, and, and ultimately the goal in mobbing is to get rid of a target out of the workplace. Mm. Whether, whether that getting rid of takes the form of uh, firing the person or making life so miserable for that person that they can't take it anymore and they just quit. Uh, mobbing is a profoundly health-harming behavior uh, in which the person is subject over time, it's not just a one-off thing, to a series of negative and abusive acts directed towards them by, you know, the individuals who are involved who then become part of a group. And then, and this is key, the organization gets involved in one of two ways. Either they kind of pile on and do things proactively to speed up the removal of the person from the workplace, or they see what's going on, you know, at least key people in the organization, and they just stand back and do nothing and they let it happen. So, of course, we know that doing nothing is also an action. It's, in a Mm -hmm. paradoxical way, doing something. Yes. So... Uh, I hope that gives a, conveys a sense of what mobbing is and how it's different from, from bullying. Absolutely. It's an entire social process. Uh, you're systemic. You, you look at systems, and it's how it, it all is of a piece so that a person uh, who may be recruited is afraid that if they, they don't get in on it, uh, then they'll be a victim themselves. Yeah, I mean that's 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 one way in which people who are witnesses or bystanders can uh, become recruited into the process. But um, you know there are other ways, and uh, those ways kind of address the the negative acts that get get going and and start escalating against a particular person. And those negative acts, um, oh, they, you know, there's, they can be so many and so varied. But um, what they all boil down to, in one way or another, is that they reflect a form of unethical communication. So, uh, one thing that I think happens a lot in mobbing. In one way that uh, it can be identified by those who are looking for it and who know about it is that the target 
uh, in the workplace. So we're talking about work uh, goals, work objectives, rather than the focus being on their competence or their areas where they might need to build con- competence. The focus over time starts to, um, you know, crystallize around the target's personality, their personal characteristics. So it becomes very often a series of just excruciating um, personal attacks on the character of a worker. And uh, those are hard to take for anybody. And over time, uh, in the workplace, uh, it's it's a rare person who can, can stand up to that kind of pressure. So, you know, it's stuff like gossip, rumors, false information, half information, um, kind of concocting a particular narrative, and it's usually a negative narrative, and disseminating that. And, of course, in workplaces, grapevines are very effective ways to disseminate information. Uh, ridicule, belittling, humiliation, sometimes in, in, you know, in a public way in, in the workplace, failing to stop all this kind of negative um, communication being directed towards a person, isolating that target, giving them the cold shoulder, sabotaging their work, uh, not giving them the resources that they need to do their work properly, uh, shutting them out of, for example, shutting them out of workplace information loops, having meetings to which they're not invited but which about which they are a primary topic so i hopefully that gives a sense of the kind of stuff that can go on that um is very abusive and very erosive of health and of self-esteem and even of personal and professional identity over time Oh, it sounds so awful, Dr. Maureen Duffy. Yes. And um, you talk about research, uh, that there's as many as 37% of American workers have experienced workplace abuse at some time in their working lives. Yes. The statistics vary a little bit depending on the, on, on the research. Uh, and we're... We're really in the early stages of collecting and, and, well, more importantly, refining, you know, our, our basic descriptive research about the problem. But that's a good number, anywhere from 27 to, uh, you know, at, the, at one end to as high as 50 percent, just it depends on how the questions are asked and all that, uh, of, of workers. Uh, report that they have been uh, somehow exposed to to workplace bullying and abusive work contexts at some point in their careers. So that, that, that's a lot of people. Uh, the 50 percent probably includes folks who are reporting that they've witnessed it. When we think about uh, people who have uh, actually been directly exposed where they're the recipient of it the the numbers probably more around the 27 28 percent mark based on what we what we know we're always refining those numbers as we get more and better research mm. well i'm thinking about the term binging i don't know if you've ever heard of the term binging it's a, a term in the sociology literature, and and it is referring to the idea of putting someone down, someone someone who excels in their work, yes, and therefore changes the standard when the yes. others don't want a high standard. So they do everything they can to put that person in place, put them in their place, and and uh, shame them into not uh, excelling, not performing well. Do you, yeah. Do you yeah. have another term for that, or I don't? Because because I I've, I've read it in the sociology literature, and I haven't really read it anywhere else. So I was curious if you had come across something like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, in, in my, in my uh, work and reading, what you're describing as binging would be associated um, 
more in contexts where there's um, 